Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'd like to discuss uh, a new speaking topic, speaking topic from part one uh, that is used this season. Uh, so from May till August 2020. Uh, the topic is street markets. So uh, you might expect to be asked the following questions. Do many people go to street markets in your country? Uh, or do you like going to street markets? Um, what is the difference between street markets and supermarkets? What do people usually buy at street markets? Or sometimes they ask you, what do, what do they sell? What kind of things are sold at street markets? Are there many street markets in your country? Something like this. Oh, oh, uh, there's one more question um, that I heard recently. It's, do you often go to, to street markets? So, um, I'm going to share some ideas uh, how you can demonstrate advanced vocabulary from C1 and C2 levels. Um, first, let's look at some, um, some lexical items, so vocabulary items and collocations related to this topic. So first, it's to be on the lookout for antique collectibles, right? So if you go to a flea market, maybe you will want to um, to buy some some antique things a flea market uh, that's that's a, if you remember the word flea from the topic about insects you understand what it means it's just a market where where they sell different different small things uh, markets attract a lot of shoppers or visitors it's a great place to shop for something all at an affordable price okay we'll also talk about how to say cheap and expensive in an, uh, an advanced way how to express this idea to haggle or to bargain that's a, it's a useful word and then uh, market specialize in something, bric-a-brac, that's, that's, that's a nice thing. Then the place for bargain hunters, a jumble sale, this is when, you, when they sell something at a cheap price at a market, a veritable maze of stalls to pre-use stalls laden with everything from fresh produce to clothing, right? Um, so at a market, they sometimes can cheat you out of your money right? But uh, you can haggle over a price. That's a collocation. Uh, people who work at a market can be called street vendors or stall keepers, right? Uh, um, so street markets, markets can also be a lifesaver. Uh, for those who are from Russia, you know, there is a very nice Russian expression, Pavlishka Vorochalishka, so that's what is a lifesaver. Um, for those on a budget, so you can say, uh, it is safe to say, or it is a fact of life, that street markets uh, prove to be a lifesaver for those on a budget or for those on a uh, tight budget. That would be really impressive to use two uh, expressions, like to be a lifesaver for those on a budget. Okay, so to lead a zero waste lifestyle, that's nice. To soak up the atmosphere of place and to feel the vibe. So these are the expressions you can, um, uh, you can also use. So let's have a look at the first question. Uh, do many people go to street markets in your country? So, well, to paraphrase, go to the market, you can say buying stuff from stalls, from street uh, vendors, and you can say it's hugely popular in this country, for example, like this. Um, so you can also compare the prices uh, with shops and say the produce is nowhere near as pricey or as costly as the goods in shops. Right, so we'll use an advanced comparative construction here. Uh, then I've already mentioned it to be a lifesaver. Uh, it is safe to say that such markets prove to be a lifesaver for those on a tight budget. Okay, uh, for those who are from Russia, so since most of my students are from Russia, uh, I also included some translations. Okay, for your convenience. Then, uh, do you like going to street markets? Well, you can either say yes to feel the vibe or something like that, or you can, you can mention the hustle and bustle of such places, and you can say something like, to be brutally honest, I can't stick or I can't stand the hustle or I can't bear the hustle and bustle of such places. They are too happening for my liking, okay? That would be really nice. Um, it's quite a short answer, but it's, um, well, it, has, it contains a lot of advanced expressions. Then, uh, what do people usually buy at street markets? So uh, you can say that there are lots of things uh, and you can say a bewildering range of goods. Instead of a lot of, uh, you can impress the examiner with something like, uh, well, this word as many people like is a plethora of, uh, or, but I recommend a bewildering range of goods, right? So at such places, and they, and they can say more often than not, uh, sorry, as such places, more often than not, 
uh, boasts a bewildering range of goods. People are spoiled for choice. That's another uh, nice expression. They're spoiled. There, there is so much choice that they're spoiled. Okay, then uh, you can find all goods under the sun. All goods under the sun means everything possible uh, at rock bottom prices or knockdown prices. Everything is dirt cheap at flea markets. Uh, this is quite, uh, well, this is quite spoken, quite colloquial. Uh, if you want to say that, for example, you, you, also, uh, you also need to compare a supermarket uh, and a market in another question. So you can also mention that something is cheap or expensive. So instead of uh, expensive, what I would recommend, you can use an idiom here, uh, such as it costs a pretty penny to buy uh, something at a supermarket. Or if you talk about a market, you can say it doesn't cost a pretty penny uh, to buy something. So to cost a pretty penny. In British English, you can also say uh, it costs an arm and a leg. Okay, um, and then uh, you can also mention the prices. So uh, if the prices are not very high, you can say they're rock bottom prices or knockdown prices, but you can also say uh, exorbitant prices. This word is good for, even for essays because it's, uh, it's quite formal. Exorbitant prices or extortionate prices. Okay, uh, and you can also say that because it costs a pretty penny to buy something in a supermarket, Oh, I'm sorry, it costs a pretty penny to buy a supermarket because prices there are exorbitant. So you have to shell out. To shell out means to, to, have, um, to, to spend a lot of money. To shell out or to fork out. Um, so uh, by, by, uh, using this, uh, by following this logic, you can use an idiom, one of them, uh, a band nine lexical item, an uncommon lexical item, and um, a phrasal verb. Okay, to shell out or to fork out. Then uh, what do people usually buy at street markets? Also to impress the examiner that you know um, some advanced words, mention some kinds of mushrooms and berries. So pause the video and try to think how many mushrooms and berries can you name in English? So if you mention something like strawberries, uh, probably the examiner will not be surprised. You will want some uh, really uncommon items. So please pause the video and think about what uh, mushrooms and berries you, you could name in English. All right, so uh, here are my ideas. Uh, you don't have to memorize them all, just uh, two or three mushrooms and two or three berries will be enough. So they can be sap, bolitas, or orange cap bolitas, rasula, um, then champignon, okay, chanterelle, coral milky cap, or woolly milk cap. Um, and uh, about berries, this can be red or black currants, honeysuckles, cranberries, cloudberries, uh, viburnum dogwood okay so if you mention strawberries or blackberries or blueberries probably they won't be impressive but that's already something right so uh, if you mention these ones they will be really nice uh, yeah also elder buckthorn and rowan then what is the difference between street markets and supermarkets so you can say that you can mention the cash desk so uh and uh, you can say whereas um well supermarkets accept both cash and credit cards, uh, super, uh, street markets tend to accept cash only, right? Um, then are there many street markets in your country? Uh, you can say that it's safe to say that there are, uh, they are not all the rage in this country. So they're not so popular. Um, oh, despite uh, the fact that prices tend to be rock bottom rock bottom and knockdown. Also, when you compare street markets and supermarkets or say why there are many or not many street markets, you can also mention this vocabulary for prices, extortionate, exorbitant prices. Maybe in the previous question, you mentioned extortionate. Now you can say exorbitant. Uh, in the previous question, you said it costs a pretty penny. Now you can say it costs an arm and a leg. Uh, and then you said, uh, you have to shell out. Now you can say you have to fork out. So take the examiner by the throat and uh, use as many advanced uh, lexical items as you can. Of course, it should be natural. But here it's natural. You're talking about prices at a market or a supermarket. Then uh, the final question, do you often go to a supermarket? Well, this is what I recommend to, uh, to, to my students. Well, first of all, uh, to talk about how often you do, you do something, there is an idiom, once in a blue moon. But we can go in even further. So uh, 
you can uh, you can do it in the following way you can use third conditional and say something like had you asked me it means if you had asked me this question let's say five years ago i would have answered that i went to um to a supermarket once in a blue moon okay so uh if you say that you will use third conditional with inversion and an idiom okay had you asked me this question let's say five three years ago i would have answered that i went to a supermarket once in a blue moon and then you say having said that now or currently uh, i go to the supermarket every other day or whatever you want to say it doesn't matter now uh, you can say something else about your current situation but you've already done a lot you've already used third conditional you've already used inversion you've already used an idiom once in a blue moon that is uh, that will be quite impressive i believe okay so um i hope you enjoyed this video uh, please put thumbs up, uh, sign up to my channel if you still haven't. If you have any questions or have any other ideas that, uh, uh, any other interesting expressions that can be used to answer this, uh, to, uh, these questions, the questions on this topic, then please write this in the commentary. Okay, thank you.